Hey ladies, I am coming making this video message to tell you all questions that I personally feel should be off the table when you are dating a man. Um, I told you guys I was going to make a part two um, to the video setting boundaries with men who show interest in you. So you can look at this video message as a part two, but I just want to throw some things out there that I feel should be off the table when you are dating a man. Because when you are dating a man, you don't know him like that. And until you all become exclusive where you know for a fact you are going to be um, in a relationship with him, I just feel like that man should not be asking you certain questions. So if it resonates with you and if you are in, in agreement with it, you can apply it to your life. The first thing that I want to say is this though. Um, a lot of you all know that when I make a video message, I tell you all that I don't want to address people in the world. And on certain topics, I really don't want to address people in the world. Um, but on other video message, I tell people that I'm making it for everybody. But for those of you who want clarity why I make certain video messages targeting just the Christian audience, I want to let you know this. I do that because God holds saved people to a higher standard than he does people who are in the world, especially to my saved sisters. You all already know those of us who are saved, God definitely holds us and expects more from us as saved women than he does women who don't know him, who are not walking with him, and who are not saved. Where someone who is in the world can dabble in certain things and they can do certain things and get away with it, that is not necessarily going to be the same story that a saved man or woman have uh, has because God holds us to a higher standard. So let's just say you're unsaved and you're in the world, you are free-spirited and you make decisions based off whatever pleases you. You can go and do something and dabble in something and God may not do anything to you. He may not bust your head. He may not punish you in whatever way he sees fit. But me or somebody else can go and do that same thing and God deals with us real quick. He gets us back, if not that same day, a couple of days, a couple of weeks later. He deals with us. And so I just wanted to give that clarity to you all that all my video messages are not always just going to be for people in the body of Christ, but most of them are. But I have to be open to the fact that everybody is not saved. I have told you guys this in uh, numerous video messages, and that's the whole point. If we only set out to just evangelize and talk to people who were saved, what happens to the people that are unsaved? They would just be left with no one who ministers to them, who evangelizes to them, who tells them about God, or who even offers um, information to them that can change their life as far as introducing God to them. So now that I got that out the way, ladies, let me tell you, um, when a man approaches you and he says he's interested in you, if you agree to dating that man and getting to know him, there should still be a line that's drawn as far as him asking you certain things if you are not his woman. When you are just courting, uh, you know, you're being courted and a man is getting to know you, you should not give everything away to that man. There are still some very personal, private things that you should keep under wraps because, again, you don't know that man's character. You don't know his mentality. You don't know his attitude. So when you give away certain information, if that man makes a decision in the middle of the stream, let's say after two or three dates, that he no longer wants to date you for whatever his reason is, then he already now has a lot of personal private information about you that he can go and share with others or put out there okay and all i'm saying is that you may not really care about that but you still need to exercise a certain uh, uh, level of control and privacy so one question that i'm gonna tell you i feel should be off the table when you're just dating and that particular man is not your your man he's not 
uh, your fiance and you all are not exclusive and um, it's not about to lead to marriage is a man that is asking you how much you make a year. Okay. All of you all are not going to agree with that. But I feel like when a man is just dating you and getting to know you, what does your income have to do with him dating you? When you date someone and when someone comes into your life, you have to really accept what their entire truth is. You have to accept them for exactly where they are. And in the event, if you do not accept them for who they are and where they are, then you need to move on. But if you say, I'm feeling this person, I like this person, I want to give him a chance, then that's another story. But all I'm saying is that I personally don't feel like a woman sharing how much she makes while she's dating a man is something that should be discussed because certain men, they will target you. I'm just being so real. Certain men, I've seen men. I've seen men target certain women who brag about and they're real quick to share their income um, or their salary with a man. I've seen it so many times. They will tell a man that they're dating. They don't even know him like that. It'll just, the topic will come up, well, where, where do you work? What do you do? And then it'll then lead to that woman talking about how much money she brings in. And men sometimes will target women and feel like, okay, she told me she makes 75K, 85K. 92 95k 100k a year if that man is looking for a come up or if that man is looking for help then baby girl you have just made yourself the target you have just made yourself the target all men again don't do this but some men they set out to get women who make a certain amount of money because they want to take advantage of that woman. And men can smell desperation. If you give off desperation, if you are really press, pressing the issue of marriage or you want to have a baby and you demand that a man marries you, sometimes if men don't say something about that or call you out on that, they are listening and taking in what you're saying. And so they can tell by looking at you, okay, she really, really, this sister really desires marriage really bad. And you know, she's not going to give a brother a lot of space to play around with her so if i start dating her and i become exclusive with her probably within six to eight months to one year i need to really really probably marry her or we need to at least be engaged and some men they may feel like well you know what i can put on an act and act like i'm into her but at the same time i know i'm charming and i can play games with her and i can get some money out of her now some of you ladies you may not believe that but this is a real thing that some men do and this is why i tell you all the time and i truthfully believe this is why god does not want us having sex outside of marriage because when you have sex outside of marriage it breaks you down it leaves you open it leaves you weak it leaves you vulnerable and your good judgment is no longer in place it brings out a lot of feelings it brings out a lot of very very strong emotions especially if you really like that guy or you know if that guy likes that girl I have seen people that have completely just lost their moral compass, their their emotional state has been completely out of place and they have just turned into a monster because of the fact they have gotten physical with someone that they were dating. And I've seen it with Christian women and men and I've seen it with unsaved uh, men and women that are in the world. I've seen it. And so all I'm saying to you ladies is that when a man is asking you how much you make and you all have been dating for one or two months, I don't feel like that's a conversation you need to be having with that man. Now, if he says, I want you to be my girl, I want you to be my woman, let's uh, go exclusive now. I'm taking you off the market. Let's tell everybody we are an item now. Then when it starts getting serious, then I know that that conversation can then become appropriate. 
Maybe not for all of you, but some of you all. Like I said, if God is approving of this man and you're praying about it and you are discerning, then I feel like then it's okay to discuss that. Because again, people out here are out for themselves. So many people are looking for someone that they feel is weak or someone that they feel is vulnerable or someone that they feel is stupid or dumb. And so they will go to the ends of the earth to do whatever they can to suck you dry, whatever you got, whether it's sex, whether it's money, whether it's whatever. You just got something that they want. So I just wanted to let you guys know that as far as that goes. The next thing I want to put out there and um, let you ladies know that men should not be doing is asking you a lot of questions about your children. Okay, I understand that you can tell a man, well, I have kids, if you have kids. It's okay to tell a man, well, I have two or three or four kids. I don't think a woman should ever lie about that. But I don't feel like details about those children and their father or fathers, that should really be on the table when, again, that man is dating you and trying to get to know you. Kids, to me, in a conversation when you're dating a guy, I don't even feel like they should even be a topic. I don't feel like right off in the beginning or early on in the dating stage, I don't feel like that really too much should be a topic, especially if you have little children. Now, if you are a woman that's dating and your children are older, like maybe they're in high school or they're on their way out of high school or they are in college, that's a different situation. But a lot of you ladies who are younger, you're young and you have small children, they're two and three and four and five and seven and eight they're babies i just personally feel like that should not be a conversation where you are giving that man a lot of details on your children because you don't know him like that you don't know his background you don't know what he's capable of so you need to leave that off the table in the beginning another thing i want to tell you guys is you need to be side eyeing a man that is bragging about all of his accomplishments and what he has when you're dating him when a man is coming at you and he's bragging about the money that he makes, he's bragging about the car that he has, he's really, really into his physical appearance and that's what he's talking about. He's talking about all the women that want him. He's talking about all the women he's had and dealt with. He's talking about all the women that are attracted to him and who he can have if he wanted to. I think you should probably take that as a red flag because you'll just be one of those women that's on the list. I just feel like a man bragging about all his accomplishments, but he's not talking about anything else. You should be side eyeing him and you should probably think twice about dating him because that's not who that man is. A man is not his money. A man is not his house. A man is not his car. A man um, is not his accomplishments. What a man has accomplished is a small area of who he really is because it's so many dimensions to us as human beings you really need to be finding out where that man mind is at where his character is at and where his spirit is at i'm gonna keep telling you ladies that don't always be quick to just look at what that man has because when you come into a situation and you're trying to secretly use somebody just for what they have, what then happens if they lose it? If they lose everything, God forbid, or they are put in a situation where they can no longer make the money that they are making, how then will you treat them? How then will you view them? Will your attraction to him be the same? This is why, ladies, you got to dig deeper. You got to dig deeper. You got to really get to know that man in a different, uh, in a in a different lane. Okay, not the lane of material possessions. I'm gonna just tell you the truth. One more thing that I want you ladies to look at um, and pay attention to. Um, if you have a man who is 
questioning you about why you are divorced or why you broke up with your ex-boyfriend or he is always talking about his ex he's telling you about one of his baby mothers and he's bad mouthing her or he's talking real bad about his ex-wife or he's just sitting there or every time you date him the topic of his exes are coming up i feel like those types of conversations should be off the table because if you all are dating to get to know each other why are you all having a discussion about your exes especially again early on you don't even know if you're gonna be with this man you don't even know if you all are gonna be exclusive so telling all of these deep um details of you know why you are divorced what specifically happened what was said why you did what you did or listening to him bad mouth his ex-wife or his ex-girlfriend or his last relationship i literally would take that as a red flag i would take that as a red flag because it's a time and place for that now when it gets to the point that you all are about to be exclusive or the relationship is turning serious meaning that man has come to you and said again i want you to be my woman I want you to be my girl. I no longer want to just date you. I want this to turn real. I want to let everybody know you are my girl. I am ready to start discussing us getting engaged and then going to full-blown marriage. When it starts to get serious, and you better be absolutely sure that that situation is turning serious. OK, you better know that then there are more things about yourself that you should start sharing. There are more things about yourself that you need to be telling that man. This video message is not to say hide things or be deceptive or lie. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that you have to protect certain things. OK, you cannot do certain things before the appropriate time prematurely so many of you ladies you not only give away your body prematurely and outside of the will of god but you share certain things about yourself you allow that man to come at you aggressively about certain things before it's time to have discussions about those things. I'm going to say this and end the video message. Some women have regretted opening up and telling a man certain things about their self and certain secrets and certain details about their life and their background or certain things that happened to them that really, really damaged them or it broke them in some way. And what happened after they told that man something that was not trustworthy, that was a fake Christian, he really didn't know God the way he said he knew God. The minute that he gets angry at that woman, or the minute that woman sets a boundary with him, he starts to throw in her face the very thing she let her guard down and told him about her past or about her background i'm gonna tell you all something just to give you an example to bring more truth to that part that i just told you it's a question that gets asked of a lot of women it's a very common question because um i'm working on a singles event with um some friends of mine now that i graduated with from high school and grammar school and i have been a panel speaker uh, at a lot of singles events and one question that is always asked is what answer do women give a man when he asks them how many men have they slept with or how many partners uh, have they slept with and women 
will get so angry or scared or embarrassed or ashamed and defensive when that question is asked of them because if you talk to some of these women out here they don't want to really tell the man the truth because they've had an angry controlling jealous or possessive man that has thrown it in their face and so i'm just telling you ladies you have to keep some things under wraps. Now, I'm going to tell you this personally. I don't care how anybody feels. This is just my truth. If a man was to ask me that question, I would be upfront and honest about it. Okay? This is not to raise myself up against other women. But I can only be honest. I can only be real. I wouldn't be ashamed and embarrassed to answer the question. And I'm not saying I would answer that particular question early on. But all I'm saying is that I wouldn't lie about it because it's nothing for me, you know, to be ashamed of. And you ladies got to understand. I just want to say this. You got to understand that if a man is going to respect you, he's going to respect you. If a man is going to like you, he is going to like you, regardless of what you tell him. That is why I'm telling you, you have to really know the man that you are dealing with. His character has to be tested, tried and true. I'm going to always tell you ladies that. So I wouldn't be embarrassed to answer that question. But um, I feel like this too, ladies. I understand why a lot of you all have probably lied to men if they have asked you that question. Or I understand how some of you all feel that it's an inappropriate question. But the flip side of that, let me tell you this. Part of you falling in love and part of you getting to know someone is you breaking down walls. It is you letting your guard down. It is you getting naked. Not physically naked, but emotionally naked, spiritually, and mentally naked. This fantasy that the world gives us and they lie to us in movies and on sitcoms and on shows about love, that is not really what love is. Love can be ugly. Love can be challenging. Love can be difficult. Real love can be uncomfortable. Love is not always attractive and appealing. But when you are getting to know someone, you should not be um, embarrassed or ashamed to tell them what your background is and what you came from. Again, ladies, you don't tell men this in the beginning, but your man, if he has been approved by God, and if you love him, there should be a certain level of trust. I'm not saying everything from your past, you got to lay it on the table. But certain things begin to happen. Once you marry someone, marriage exposes you. You can lie to me, you can lie to everybody else. I've said this a thousand times. Uh, but marriage exposes who you are and the last thing you want to do is lie or be deceptive about who you used to be or who you really capable of being if you're put in a certain situation because when things start to leak out or if things start to leak out your spouse or the man who is going to be your spouse they need to know how to protect you and that comes by them already knowing who you are not being surprised or shocked or thrown off when outsiders start to tell them certain things. With that particular question that I just threw out there, later down the line, let's say you get exclusive with the man. It's really serious. You all are about to get married or you all are exclusive. And it's very serious. Um, you can go to church. You could be around one of your family members. You can be in public and run into an ex or somebody from the past. And your man is asking you, who is he? How do you know him? What went down? If you were deceptive and lied about this, or you had some particular type of encounter with that man, maybe it was a one night stand or something else that was going on. I feel personally that you should be open and honest about those things. Because again, if a man's going to love you, he's going to love you. He can't hold against you what your past was. Where you were back then, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, 
before God got a hold of you and he washed you and he cleansed you and he purified you, you don't have to apologize to the man that's in your life now. You don't have to be ashamed and embarrassed about it. You put everything on the table. That's what you're supposed to do. So I hope this video message helps you ladies. Um, I hope that it touches the ones that it's supposed to touch. It's not going to resonate with everybody. It's not going to touch every woman. And I am very well aware of that. Okay, I've always known that from day one. Those who are going to, those that, I'm sorry, who are supposed to receive it, will receive it and understand it. And those of you who don't, just shh, leave quietly. Just leave quietly. Just move on. You don't have to say anything to me. You don't have to argue in my comment section. Just, just move on. It's not a big deal. Keep moving on with your life. But ladies, you get the point that I'm making. Protect yourself. Guard yourself. Spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. Don't presumpt presumptuously go out there and tell a man everything about you. Don't allow a man to come to you asking you certain questions early on. And you're not even certain if that man is going to be with you. Sometimes men will mess with you and they'll date you for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, and next thing you know, they ghosting you. If you put everything on the table too soon, or you have not been led by God, or God has not given you the instructions to share and talk about certain things, then you are now in a dangerous place and you are leaving yourself open to keep getting wounded or offended repeatedly. But if it does get serious, ladies, be open, be honest. You got to trust that God is going to put the man in your life that is trustworthy, that is honest, and he can fully be trusted with where you are emotionally or what you came from. And he knows how to deal with you. He is anointed. Hear me when I tell you, he is anointed to deal with you and to properly love you and care for you he knows how to build you back up in the broken areas outside of what god is doing and has done he has anointed that man to do the same thing for you that's the video message well guys it's time for me to go because I have some other things to do. The Lord will and I will be back with another video message. If any one of you have been offended by anything I spoke about in this video message, it's okay. It's all right. I'm not worried about it. I am not concerned because I know you will forgive me in the morning.